Hello and welcome back. In today's lesson, I'm going to teach you how to create a fake miniature. I'm sure you've seen them before. It's all over the internet. It's where you take a real scene and make it look like it's a miniature model. It's a great effect. It's really fun and it's actually pretty simple to do. Let me show you how it's done. Now go ahead and open up Photoshop. And if you're following along in another photo editor that's not Photoshop, not to worry. The process is almost identical no matter the photo editor that you're in. I'm going to go ahead and bring in my image. The most important part to making this entire technique and effect work is having an image that helps to enhance the effect. So typically you wouldn't be looking at uh, a model or a toy from um, a, an angle where it's at the same eye height. Um, so you want to have something where you're looking above the scene and the object to create the effect that you want because you want to make it seem like you're holding a toy in your hands or you're standing over um, a model scene um, something where you're going to be at a bit of a height so aerial shots or um, from uh, several stories up from a building out of a window or drone shots uh, all those are really exceptional uh, and they'll further enhance this technique uh, actually, the technique is a photography technique, and it's only been brought into photo editors because it's become so popular. Photoshop happens to have a filter made specifically for creating a tilt-shift effect, and the tilt-shift effect is the photography technique. Um, so this does a really great job in allowing you to define the region that's going to be in focus and then create the gradual blur out of focus that... Um, that really creates that effect where it, it seems like the objects you want in focus look fake. Um, so go ahead and if you have Photoshop, try that out. Um, but I happen to like working without that process. I find the transitions in the focal region uh, gradually blending out uh, out of focus um, is a little bit nicer for you if you work through it manually. Uh, so what I'm going to be doing is using a quick mask. Uh, there's a few different ways you can make the selections and, and, and make this happen manually, but I'm going to be using the quick mask technique. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and duplicate my background. Um, because I'm going to be working with an effect that requires the image to be rasterized, I'm going to keep my image rasterized and not work within smart objects. The tilt shift effect and filter works within smart objects, um, and typically I prefer to work with smart objects, although for this technique and for the filter I'm using, that won't work. So if you're following along, make sure you right click and then rasterize your layer um, as you will not have the filter in our blur um, gallery or our blur filter. Uh, the lens blur will not be applicable to a smart object. So make sure you rasterize that because we're going to be using that. Okay, so what we want to do is use the gradient tool and you want to make sure you're on the foreground to background option in your gradient. And then you also want to use this effect right here. Uh, this is going to be really important in making this effect believable. We're going to use the reflected gradient, and that's going to create, uh, for the most part, a mirrored effect um, and transition away from being in focus um, on either side of where we define as being the focal point. Uh, so now all that's left to do is go ahead and establish my quick mask. I'm going to go ahead and press my Q button on my keyboard. That's the keyboard shortcut for quick mask. And you can see my layer it now has quick mask enabled. Um, and then what you want to do is where you click and start to, to draw out that place where you click initially is going to be the place where you establish the focal point. Um, so it's going to be most in focus where you click and then as you drag away from that region it's going to define the areas that are going to become less focused and more blurry. So I'm going to start right around here and then drag up and out at this angle and that should give me a nice focal range uh, right along this region right here. Um, I maybe have not enough focus on our trees. Uh, this looks okay. Um, let me just show you what that looks like once I press Q to show you my selection. Um, the selections are good. I just am not certain that I'm going to have enough focus on these trees here, which I find to be important detail in this particular composition. I want this tree in focus. I want the water in focus. I want along the water's edge and focus, the bridge, uh, the growth back here, and then certainly along the temple and the entire temple uh, to be in focus. Uh, so let me go ahead and um, show you the next step and we'll see how it looks. And if you messed up, if you made any mistake, 
uh, when you uh, were trying to define that region, just try again. Uh, I just pressed the Q key again, went back to my quick mask, and then just keep on uh, making different attempts. With the opacity at 100%, it's not going to add to the selection, it's gonna make the selection over again. So you can keep on trying over and over and over again until you get that just right. It may take you several times. So don't worry, and try and find um, that, that right focal point that's gonna work for the project. So I'm gonna go ahead and press Q again. And I'm gonna go over to my filter menu and then go to blur. And then I'm gonna go to that of my lens blur. And you can see we have already a pretty good effect. Um, just in that one selection, that one filter, we've built for the most part uh, what we want the scene to look like. Um, so that's what I was concerned about. This is a little bit too blurry, um, even a little bit blurry back here and a little bit blurry over here. Um, it still works, um, it's still functional, uh, it still creates that of a miniature effect, um, but I might go back uh, another time and get a better focal region on the, these trees right through here. That's gonna further enhance the effect. Um, so the radius and these other options and settings that I have at their current, uh, their current amounts, current values, is fine, but it's not a universal guide that's going to make a perfect miniature every single time. So this particular amount of the radius at 100% works fine for this project, but it may be too drastic for your project, depending on what you're working on. So it's something where you're gonna to have to try and find something that works best for that particular composition. This just happens to work well for mine. So um, the only thing that I really did adjust, um, and it was prior to recording this video, so it had that value already determined uh, when I chose the filter. Um, but uh, I, the only thing I really adjusted was the radius, and I wanted to make that more drastic uh, to really enhance the effect and really a drastic focus on the objects that matter most to make this a believable um, miniature or tilt shift project. So uh, that's one thing that I really changed. Um, and then you wanna make sure that monochromatic is unchecked and then certainly that noise is at zero. Go ahead and press okay. And for the most part, we have a pretty believable effect going on already. Typically when you see a model or um, a model scene or toys, um, aside from the fact that they're smaller and you're looking down at them, typically the colors are really vibrant and saturated. So that's the other thing that makes this technique uh, work well, is to change that of the vibrance. So I'm gonna go to my adjustment layers. I'm gonna add vibrance. You can also use hue and saturation, um, but I'm gonna work with vibrance. And I'm gonna increase the vibrance drastically. And I'm also going to increase the saturation quite a bit as well. And that just gives a very hand-painted type of a look. So that works fine. The next thing that I want to do is I want to add subtle added detail to the places that matter most. I would like more detail around the tree, uh, but that's too far to focus. So I'm going to add subtle detail to the places that are in focus, like the bridge, the water, and also this temple back here. To do that, I'm going to go to my filter and go over to my sharpen option and then go to the unsharp mask. Now, these values, again, I've already attempted previously to recording this, and I found that these work best. Uh, but it's, again, not a global or universal set of values that's going to make the best miniature. Um, so you want to play with these values, uh, the amount and the radius, uh, and even the threshold, to find what works best to define certain regions on here. So, for an example, if I change this radius to something much more drastically um, intense, um, it's going to ruin the effect. So if I start doing this, it's, that's no good. So let me go ahead and undo that. And the 5.9 works just fine, but that's in a balance with the amount as well. So fine tune that and you'll be able to add a subtle detail that you want. So I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. And that's it. Um, it may require a little bit more of adjustment of color with another adjustment layer for your particular composition, but I happen to like this look. The only thing that I might in the future change and uh, modify a little bit is just the color of the water. It's a little bit too green for my liking, but uh, overall, I think it looks like it's a little miniature scene. So that's really all it takes. Um, 
And if you like doing this, my recommendation is to go out and maybe spend a day where you're trying to find images and, and take pictures of a scene or an area where you can go back to Photoshop or whatever photo editor you're, you're using and have fun exploring and creating these miniatures. You can even use certain types of lenses to create uh, videos and photography without using much of any effect in a digital darkroom like Photoshop. Um, it's just a certain type of depth and uh, aperture um, and just a, a few different settings that you can make any scene, any image look like this. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you in the next lesson.